Hey guys, welcome back. I just wanted to let you know that, wow, it is nuts. My, my prediction is already coming to fruition. I don't think it's because of the video I dropped. If I did, that's insane because that's by huge word of mouth because I only have 70 subs. Um, or what, 74, 75, whatever. But it is insane because if, if you don't know, if you, if you aren't tracking break cards as individuals, sell for a buck to four bucks for a mint break card. So that means if you bought 10, it would cost you 10 to $40 for individual cards of your choice. Now, why is that different? And, what, and what, how am I saying my prediction is correct based on just this little bit? So as you can see, there's still two days and 10 hours left for this bid. It's only for nine break cards. And they're not even all the fancy dancy ones. The ones that are on here that are kind of probably gonna be worth something more down the road than the others is you got Nine Tails Machamp, Raichu, and uh, Lugia. The other ones are just extra bonus cards. They're not really whatever. And really to make money on these, depending on how the bid goes, you really need to get PSA 9s or higher. Um, PSA 8s are definitely gonna be waiting a little bit. So. How did my prediction come true already? Well, generally when you do a lot bid, usually a lot bid, you're paying a lot less per card. You're taking some risks, you're not getting as many details, um, and you're you're hoping that you can get all these cards um, with an you know, incentive that you'll be able to sell them yourselves more for profit individually, or the intention of grading them and still also selling them individually more for profit. So what am I getting at here? Well, if you could usually buy individual break cards now when people say mint it's not always true but i looked at a few selections a few days ago and they looked mostly mint for for the most part most of the most of the uh the break cards that were being sold in individual look like they were mint and these weren't even bids some of them were buy now for a dollar most of them were bids though and um and you know i was trying to do some lots i just lost one lot it, it was a decent deal um, it's like a lot of 20 break cards, and I think it sold out at 67 bucks. Now that one kind of proves the theory, but that one, the difference is, is I missed, uh, no, I think it sold for 80 something bucks. And um, I missed out because I, I stopped paying attention to the bid, and the bid just skyrocketed way out of control. Um, I was hoping to pay a little bit over a buck per card, which is what you really should expect for, for when you do lots. Not every lot should be a buck per card, but lots are supposed to generally be much cheaper. There's someone trying to sell some items quickly for a lower price, but in general, all the money at once versus selling the things individually slowly. So with the fact that there's two, that there's still two days and 10 hours left for nine cards, they're already above four bucks per card. They're, they're already at basically, I think $4.50 per card. And there's still two days and 10 hours left which if you don't know for eBay, that is a momentous amount of time. It means that this bid in, in eBay world, generally the last 10 seconds, especially if the item is hot, the bid jumps. So if these are already at 40 bucks, these nine could possibly sell for probably 80 to 100 bucks, which there's still some money to be made if they are PSA 10s. It's gonna take a little bit while, a little bit longer, but what this is proving in theory is that the price for individual cards, even if you buy them in lot, is already starting to double. So I'm not saying I'm a genius, I'm just saying so far I've had some decent predictions. I don't think it was because of my video, if it was, like seriously, all you people who are getting word of mouth subbed in my video, like it, like, and, and there's reasons why these cards specifically are going to pay out. And I've mentioned it in my other videos, I'm gonna mention it again people did not like these cards. And you're probably sitting there going, well, that makes no sense. Why are they gonna go up? Because people weren't collecting these things. People didn't like them. They didn't like that they're horizontal. I think that's awesome. But people didn't like that they're horizontal. They didn't like that they're not technically evolutions. You just, you play them on the same card. You play a nine tails break on a nine tails. You don't play it on a vault picks. So, some of the playability was down. They didn't like that. They're kind of hard to look at. I like looking at them. I think that they're a really cool way of doing the hollow foil and the cards in general. It's really funny. People say they're overdone, but in terms, they're about as overdone as the rainbow cards, and everyone loves the rainbow cards. They are going to skyrocket, and not just with 
this COVID pandemic raising prices. So for those who don't know, and I'm not the only one, there's several people now predicting this, when COVID ends, which uh, people are predicting 2021, I think we're gonna see the downfall of the Pokemon industry at 2022, um, as in the year 2022, and not really downfall. Um, there's going to be a drop, but I want to explain more thoroughly where we're going to see the drop. We're going to see the drop, not in every last Pokemon item, and not just in every card. The drop will be in everything that was in the Wizards of the Coast era. And why will the drop be there? Not because simply COVID is over and people went back to work. That is the cause, like the causality of it, but what created the spike was simply the fact that people needed to find a second way to make income who weren't working. People have always been telling themselves as kids when they had Pokemon cards, these will be worth something, I'm going to sell them. But they had never gotten them into a big enough market. And so your neighborhood, you had a binder that's probably worth, you know, probably 10 grand now. But if you can't get into the market, if you don't take the time to learn eBay or some sort of e-commerce to which you're open to the entire world, or at least US if you just keep your shipping to US, you're limited to your neighborhood and the people you know. So your $4,000 binder that you probably, you know, over the time paid $300 for all those cards as a kid collecting them, you're now pretty much either forced to hold on to them forever or sell them and, and say, yeah, $300 is $300, you know, this dude offered me $300 for my binder that I know, and they're just sitting on my shelf. I'll use $300 for a little party for myself. COVID forced people to learn how to use eBay. That is why we have seen a gigantic spike in cards. The spike didn't just recently happen. We've had a gigantic spike in Charizards, that's for certain, but the spike in all Pokemon prices started about one month to two months after COVID. Why did it take so long? Because people, you know, they don't start looking for alternate means right away. They go, okay, well, this is some time for me to chill. And then after, you know, you know, people were off work for more than a month to two months, they started saying, I need to make money. And then they started digging through stuff to do e-commerce. And then Pokemon just started to build traction through eBay. So the a solid prediction and this is just me again just I, i'm really good at analyzing and watching markets guys that's what i do it's what my channel is it's buying and selling pokemon cards and really believe it or not every last pokemon channel you see is about buying and selling pokemon cards they just hype up and say it's community and stuff and we do have a community and we have a, a means to look out for each other and we have a means to look out for new people because if new people get scammed they're not going to want to be a part of this hobby in this community and the, and the card market continue to flow. But we're gonna see a 33% decrease in Wizards of the Coast prices around the year 2022, generally pretty much right at the beginning of it. Because let's say COVID does finally start to see, like a we start to see COVID kind of go away by 2021. People are not going to just stop buying and selling Pokemon cards. This is a side hustle. I have a several jobs. I have a full-time job and I have several other jobs and I also have this and I still am going to buy and sell Pokemon cards. I've been doing this even with my full-time job. I never I never got it got out of work due to COVID. So I I am still going to do this and people are still going to do this. Now what we'll have is some people will be taken back they won't do it as much, or some people will have sold all their cards and won't have a reason to sell them anymore. Um, but, uh, or, you know, they're not gonna have their cards that they had in their closet anymore. They, you know, they, they didn't go and buy and sell, they just sold the ones they had. So we're still gonna have people in the market. And why specifically Wizards of the Coast is gonna be the one that falls? By the 33%, we'll, we'll, we'll see a price dip in, in all Pokemon, probably 3%. Um, but why? Because they're just such high dollar and they were inflated to high dollar by the COVID market. So it's not that they're gonna lose value, they're going to lose their inflated value. They're still going to continue to appreciate. But I was talking to one of my buddies today who's trying to find his binder, it's really hilarious. He's, I told a story before, he basically has a $20,000 uh, binder he can't find and he's going nuts over it. I hope he finds it. I really do and I hope he lets us put it on the channel. I would love to have him on the channel. He lives pretty far away from me but um, 
hopefully we can get some videos of his cards or he'll hopefully I'll pay for him to mail them to me and, and we'll show him on the channel if, if, his, if his collection really is as big as he says um, and, and he's not a liar it probably is uh, but the other reason why the newer cards won't deflate as much is one they didn't inflate as much we've just seen a giant inflation on the older cards due to who had to be put into the market the people who got put into the market were the older people who, who were holding on to the cards their era of cards and that inflated the market for the needs and wants for those cards. So the newer cards, they've been inflated because of all the other inflation through the other markets, but none of them have really jumped up. Recently, XY has jumped up. We can expect to see a 10% hit there around the year 2022, but that's gonna be 10% based on the price at their highest when they get there. So the prices are still rising. We haven't had another skyrocket yet. Can I predict another skyrocket? Absolutely. If you want to know when the next skyrocket is, it is going to be the day after Thanksgiving. That's going to be still again for all the cards, and specifically Charizard, Venusaur, Blastoise, and of course Pikachu. There's going to be some reprint runs though for the newer cards. That is going to be your time to get those. I know the Pokemon TCG is trying to outproduce the scalpers. It's gonna be really hard because the scalpers have built up a ton of money and they're now really reliant on this market. I told I've been telling my buddies about the markets and Pokemon and how much they're worth and what they're going for. And my one buddy's really into market research. He's been doing a ton of market research through the stock market. I told him about the physical assets of Pokemon cards. This is the buddy trying to find his twenty thousand dollar binder. He uh he went to Walmart a couple of days ago because um, he's, he's iffy about getting in, and that's fine. I don't, I don't want, you know, not every last Joe and Jane. This isn't for every last Joe and Jane and Jill to get into this. Um, but he went to Walmart, and he went to the card section. And he sent me a video, and he said, dude, what the hell? They're all missing. I said, yeah, that's going to be like that. There's a huge market for this. It's going like crazy, and um, you need to try and catch it. So we're going to have a market drop. But it's going to be 2022, the very beginning of 2022. It's going to be a 33% drop on Wizards of the Coast items. It's going to be a 10% drop on any sort of reprint of them. I consider any time you take the base set card and just change the stats, that's a reprint of that card. So Legendary Collection. Um, well, I think no Legendary Collection is Wizards of the Coast. So that will take a 33% hit. But your other ones like XY Evolutions and stuff that are basically just really reprints of the base set cards, they're going to take a 10%. Um, that's a, it, it seems like a crazy prediction, but I'm telling you now, that's the percentages that we're looking at. Not all the entire Pokemon market is going to fall. We're going to see a re-rise. Uh, I think we'll see them re-reach their max prices around 2025. Um, I and By max prices, and people don't agree with this, but you have to understand the terminology. Um, all of your max price cards, like for example, let's use, and I know this is the Holy Grail, and only some people, so many people have it, but let's use first edition Shadowless Hollow PSA 10 Charizard. Uh, I think they go for 150 plus grand right now. They will, of course, continue to increase in price. That's one thing, but the, by increasing in price, it's not what you think. They're going to cap out. And the cap out, in my opinion, is going to be in today's dollars of 200 grand. So it'll probably be like 221 grand by the time that happens. But in, today, in today's dollars, November 10th, 2020, it would have been a 200 grand value. The only reason why it will continue to go up is due to inflation. The actual straight increase of value to the card is not going to cap above it's going to cap at 200 grand today's dollars. Um, I know that seems high. I know some people who are new to this are saying 200 grand for a card. Every time I tell people the price of Pokemon cards who aren't into buying and selling Pokemon cards, they absolutely don't believe me. It's fine. Um, it's not about them. It's about buying and selling the cards. Uh, I know that sounds really um, greedy, but another Pokemon YouTuber who's really big, uh, Zed Emporium or whatever, he just dropped a video on this saying, like, it's really bullshit when YouTubers who do the Pokemon openings and stuff are telling you, oh, it's not about the money. He said, uh, no, it's absolutely about the money. Every last one of them is full of shit. 
and and it's true that you know we gotta be honest with it it's about the money that's what we're doing it for we're doing it for the money and also it's a lot of, it is a lot of fun i will admit you're being able to create content show that we have some knowledge of a market um the ability to point out little facts i do enjoy that i do enjoy some of the fact videos some of the errors the cool things you find in this hobby is fantastic the hobby of the cards the hobby of the collecting and the hobby of understanding markets and what people are looking for so yeah i just wanted to point out my predictions already coming true I don't know how high it's going to go. I would really strongly suggest if you can try and pick up some of the break cards. I, I, this is like my third video on it within the week. That's how serious I'm about this. I'm not going to be able to buy all of them. I'm not a millionaire. Otherwise, I wouldn't even tell you all this. But I only got like 70 subs. So there's no way I'm affecting the market that much. Buy the break cards. Get them PSA. Try and get 8s to 10s. Don't. Don't settle for any less. If you can, you really want nines and tens. Um, but try and pick them up. Try and get them PSA'd. I really suggest it. Um, I have more videos coming. I have so much content. Um, thanks for watching. Bye.